As we learned watching the previously released video material, operators at squad successfully completed the real field exercise bridge explorer. After three hours continuously operating in his hermetically sealed Zodiac PPE, he reached his outpost base. While we can observe him in unloading from his heavy gear, we have asked some of our most skilled CBRN mission evaluators to give an insight of the exercise results. Their evaluation actually focuses on Zed Squad's physical and foremost mental stamina. Only best performance, endurance and discipline will qualify the operator for pushing forward to even longer CBRN recon missions, up to the so far never achieved state of the future long range recon soldier permanently operating in completely CBRN proof of protective equipment. We could speak to Mr. Su Kal Tayat, a consultant, observer and prognosticator on international CBRN issues from GLPS the renowned Great Lakes Protection and Survival Think Tank. Having passed this maneuver, Mr. Zot Squad provided some very relevant reflections from a highly skilled operator about the personal burden of donning and wearing the Zodiac encapsulating PPE. It is interesting to hear the comparison drawn between the heavy rubber Zodiac suit and the filter gas mask provided for CBRN recon personnel with it which is provided for combat frogmen. As Zod Squad points out, both are men who have to survive in lethal no-go areas. But why are such men like this operator willing to push forward into most dangerous terrain and total autonomy from their unit and encapsulated in such heavy, uncomfortable and hindering protective suits intended to be the only layer separating their body from the most lethal warfare agents around? Zod Squad himself comments that performance and endurance are crucial for promotions to higher ranks, medals, or decorations. But I am sure this is not all. On the other hand he notes that recruits during their initial training are apt to feel drained after the 20 minute exertion of properly donning the Zodiac suit, gas mask, and secondary gear, even before they commence the actual mission into a hot zone. Fortunately perhaps, the cumbersome and restrictive ensemble serves to enforce the required gear discipline. Encapsulated by the Zodiac, one cannot get the mask off, one has to adapt to this. This is a question of drill. We often, when an recruit operator becomes comfortable with wearing the ensemble for several hours at a stretch, discovered he will accept this as a second skin that is worn with confidence with a strong sense of satisfaction in the physical mastery which is required, and with an unmistakable pride in being part of a very distinctive elite. But, Mr. Su Kal Tayat, we have found other personnel that after some initial training in their Zodiac Ensemble still consider this as a frightening experience. What do you think about this statement from a member of the booted discipline team who has experienced wearing the Zodiac himself? You see, the Zodiac is way more brutal than it looks. Not to mention the bulletproof vest, helmet and all the other gear. You are completely trapped in the suit with all your sensations stripped, every movement restricted, and even resting drains your energy because of the heat. It's like an oppressing prison, and time starts to become super slow. Of course by far the majority of recruits is not capable for extended operations in what he calls an oppressing prison. But my colleagues and I, we think it should be possible to specifically select such individuals for the longest and most physically demanding missions, knowing that the physical and psychological burdens placed upon them by their PPE would not actually cause them distress, but actually, in a peculiar way, be welcomed by them. For those elite recon units we recommend creation of a sense that wearing the fully encapsulating protective ensemble and accompanying respiratory filter device is a real privilege only extended to personnel who successfully passed the arduous, straining, and meticulous selection process. Possible recruits for service on long-range CBRN recon operations might be solicited from certified ice divers, cave divers, and industrial purpose divers with over 100 hours of work in highly contaminated marine environments. Can we learn from this, that a highly skilled CBRN operator should be aware his Zodiac protective equipment is not a portable one-man prison but an optimized second skin? 
but isn't this a step too far towards a fusion of man and machine, of soldier and his gear? Towards a new military species we might name chem warriors? At GLPS we think it is not only on the battlefield that we are likely to witness the survival of the CBRN fittest. In the future, no, actually it is our world, the present, basic survival in a world of casual, everyday toxic hazards will require many individuals to submit themselves to the rigors, hardships and inconveniences of spending many hours every day wearing cumbersome protective gear. The CBR and fittest are those most likely to survive in conditions that will lead many other less adaptive individuals to panic, existential fear, and uncontrollable stress-related urinary dysfunction and bowel release. In our increasingly hazardous world of toxic industrial disasters, super plagues, and crazed non-state actors with access to chemical labs, it is clear that society will increasingly rely upon an elite cadre of highly trained, psychologically astute and holistically committed personnel who will actually prefer to live as much of their lives as possible inside complete protective gear. It seems to me that Zot Squad is representative of this phenomenon. He may not at the current time admit to being addicted to the wearing of his highly encapsulating Zodiac suit and M65 gas mask. But he shows distinct signs that he could very easily develop such a preference. We consider our human society will only withstand the hazards of the very near future by encouraging such an elite to regard their heavy protective gear as a second, and better, skin. We can see, continuing the training of operators such as Zed Squad is a necessity. And it should attempt to make them feel addicted to their heavy gear to allow even more general and extended missions of those operators while in their hermetically sealed cumbersome protective gear. To learn more on how this training is going on, stay tuned to this channel. Reports on future training missions completed by our CBRN operators will be published here.